Shke. Had a nice fat sound. It's pop, pop. How's it going guys? All right, let's have a look at these two drums that we're comparing. So both of these are gonna be maple drums. This first one is the Shadower one. It's a Drumcraft Series 8 drum. Beautiful drum, six ply, 5.5 by 14 inches. I also have a uh, Remo Black Suede um, skin on it. The other one is the Big Boy, one of my favorite drums, the Vinnie Paul, God rest his soul. Um, his uh, signature series drum, this is a Mammoth 14 inches by eight. On the top we have a uh, Coded Power Stroke 3. Anyway, they're the two drums, um, so let's have a listen to how they sounded. Cool. So you could hear the difference between the two drums. The shallower one had a nice fat sound, it was very crispy and had a good crack when you hit it. Um, then of course it had good control as well, we showed that with the, the, the rolls. Then the deeper drum, what we had was a bigger presence, obviously because it's a bigger drum, but there was uh, almost a bark off it when you hit it, more than a crack I would say. It would have a bigger wider sound and um, it was a lot brighter which I didn't expect when I was recording I was actually shocked by it and of course the control was way greater um, I've always found that and that goes for a cross the board if you've got anything bigger be it a cymbal or a drum you can control it more and um, that, that's something that we're going to find out as we go along here um, but what does all these words mean when we talk about bright and you talk about something having a good crack um, let's have a look at these two clips that we have here and we'll explain it a bit more Okay, cool. So let's listen to the first one again and we'll take it from there. Okay, so that's shallow drum. What do we mean by that? It sounds fat. Um, well, there's a certain looseness to it. It's... So it's just, it's just extremely loose. That's what, they, what people mean when they call it fat. And that crack that we're talking about, it ties in with everything and it makes it extremely direct. So it's over very quick. And it's, there's, there's no lingering, there's no nothing, it's just quickly over. Now let's have a listen to the, uh, the deeper drum. Okay, so big difference. Big difference because of obviously the big presence that's there. And there's still that crack there, but it's a little bit more aggressive. And that's why I call it a bark. And it's actually it's, it's a bark very throaty. And I'll get back to what throaty means now in a minute. But it's very wide also. It's, there's there's a lot of audio texture so immediately when you hit you get a sound but then there's something in the middle and then there's something that finishes it off in the end and um, it sounds it's just it's just it, it's very it sounds very wide that's what it means by very wide it goes on for a little bit longer and it sounds way brighter than the other one which you'll hear in a few more examples but what I meant by throaty is if you listen to these next two clips what I have is I have one drum playing the tip of the stick and then it goes on to the deeper drum with the tip of the stick and then I'll go back to the uh, shallow drum with rim shots and then I'll go to the deeper drum with rim shots and you can hear the difference. Have a listen. Okay, so let's listen to just the tip of the stick playing on the two drums. Alright, so from the smaller one, it just sounds crispier, okay? It just sounds like a little firecracker going off because you're just using the tip of the stick. Now, when you go on to the deeper drum, it instantly changes. It gets a lot brighter. It's, it's way brighter. 
and it has that a bit of a throat that I was talking about earlier. Now it's not very apparent because you're playing with the tip of the stick. But now have a listen to the rim shot and it, you'll hear a complete difference. Great, so it's extremely direct. There's nothing afterwards, it's just the initial hit and it's just and that's it. What I want you to do now is listen to the rim shot on the deeper drum and don't listen to the actual hit, just listen to slightly after and this is very fine, very fine lines but we're talking slightly after the initial hit. Do you hear that at the end? It's ah, uh, and it has that 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 extra sound after the hit. The hit comes in as uh, and then after you have this boom, uh, and that's what people mean when they say it sounds throaty. It's uh, uh, It has that specific sound that sounds like it's coming from the back of your throat. It's very big. It's, again, it's barky. It's dark. Um, it's it's very characteristic of a very deep drum. Okay, so there's the difference in the two sounds between the two drums. Some people like a shallower drum, some people like a deeper drum. The thing to remember is that there's no better, there's no worse, there's just different. If you're after a crispier sound, more direct sound, go for a shallower drum in my experience. And if you want, again, more, a bit, bit more width in the sound, if you want it to be a little bit, a small bit aggressive, um, then the deeper drum is very good. One of the things I just much prefer deeper drums because I can get more control. Even when I was doing the rolls in the um, in the demos, it was, just, it was a pleasure to play it. Um, it was easier to get these sounds out, um, it was easier to get a bit louder, it was easier to get softer, but the control for me is very big. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video, the bigger the instrument is, especially I found in my opinion in drums, cymbals, snares, toms, you can get more control over it. Guys, take it easy. Thanks me for watching. Any questions, hit me down in the comment section and we'll chat to you soon. Bye. If you like what you've seen here today, you can see a lot more videos. Just click on any of them here on the screen.